Have you ever gone into the lab and wondered where the seemingly random values for the resistors has come from? Uh, it turns out they're not random after all. Uh, they are set by an international body. It's called the International Electrotechnical Commission. And they set up what is called the preferred number series. And this preferred number series uh, is a series called E. E series is used for resistors. And uh, E3 was an early series. It's no longer used. Uh, E6 is used for 20% tolerance resistors. And you don't see that as often as you once did. Uh, more common today are the 10% uh, tolerance resistors, and they are called the E12 series. There's also an E24 for 5%, and so on. You can read the screen there. So the, these are, are called the E series of numbering, and they choose the, uh, they're, they're what set the values for the uh, resistors. Uh, it's also being used for values of capacitors, inductors, and zener diodes. So all these use the E series. And just an FYI, there is also something called the R series, which is primarily used for values of fuses. So what is this E series, and more particularly, what is the number after that? Well, uh, the e number after the E represents the number of values in every decade uh, of possible values. So in other words, uh, if you go from, let's say, 10 ohms up to 100 ohms, there would be 10 possible values. Of course, uh, what happens is that 100 is not included there. That would be part of the next decade, which would go from 100 to 1,000. So uh, if you divide those up uh, by, let's say, a dozen, then you would have the E12 series. If you divide up 24 ways, then you'd have the E24 series, and so on and so forth. And when you divide up, uh, you don't divide up in a linear fashion. You divide it up logarithmically. And that's uh, what leads to these odd values. So here is the E12 series, which represents the plus or minus 10%. Uh, you can see it's 10, 12, 15, 18. And uh, again, it seems kind of random. So um, one thing to note here uh, is some of these series use a different amount of significant figures when they're specifying the values. The E12 uses two significant figures. We'll come back to that in a couple of minutes. So how do we get these E12 values? Well, again, I mentioned that the, it's uh, dividing up the value scale on a logarithmic scale. So uh, if you were to plot this out logarithmically and um, set uh, 12 equal divisions there, uh, that's how you would get the values. But how do you do it mathematically? Uh, it turns out that each value is the 12th root of 10 multiplied by the previous value. And that seems kind of random in itself, um, but uh, work with me for a little bit here. Uh, it turns out the 12th root of 10 is equal to 1.21153. So you take that 1.211 and multiply it by each previous value, starting, for example, at 10. And uh, then you take the answer, uh, which in this case comes out to 12.1153, and round that to the nearest whole number, so that would be 12. Um, so uh, 12 times the same number, 1.21153, gives you 14. Round that to... Uh, 15 because the it's uh, 14.538 so round that up to 15. You do that for all the numbers. You just uh, multiply the previous number times that 1.21 etc and round to the nearest whole number. And uh, that accounts for most of the numbers in the decade. Uh, however, if you look at 33 uh, multiplied by 1.21 you get 39.98. And that would round to a 40. Uh, however, because of legacy issues, uh, it turns out that uh, the standard value was chosen as 39 rather than 40. It's not proper rounding, but uh, that's what they were using prior to adopting these standards. Uh, so they just continued to use 39 rather than 40. And the same thing occurred with a 56. Uh, that's not exactly proper rounding if you did the math. Uh, but they continue to use it because that's what they were using prior to the standards. So another series here is E24. Uh, that's where you divide up uh, 24 times. And uh, this also has two significant figures. 
These represent the plus or minus 5% tolerance. And you would get that by taking the 24th root of 10 and multiplying by the previous value. So notice that the root of 10 corresponds to the E. So this is E24 and the 24th root of 10. That's what you use to multiply by the previous value in order to get the next value. Uh, next we have uh, another one that uh, really is kind of outdated, but it just illustrates the fact that the E value corresponds to the root. So uh, E6 is the sixth root of 10, and that's equal to about 1.4678. Okay, this is 20% resistors. Again, these are becoming less common. Uh, you'll see this a lot in older equipment, uh, occasionally in new stuff, but uh, it's being used less and less often. Uh, more frequently, you'll see higher precision. We have E48. Uh, this is plus or minus 2%. And what's interesting to note here is now, uh, when we're in E48 series, we move up to three significant figures when we're specifying the value. So E48 uses three significant figures. And that plays a role here when we're talking about uh, um, color codes for the resistors in order to identify the values. Resistors, of course, have colored stripes. And the E12 and E24, we said, have two significant figures. So when you color code these resistors, you color code them with four colored bands. The first two are the two significant figures for the value. The third one is the multiplier. And the last one is the tolerance. And note, if, uh, if there's no tolerance, that generally indicates it's plus or minus 20%. Uh, and that would be the E6 series. Uh, you might also see um, the resistors having five colored bands, and that is the E48 or higher series. Uh, these five colored bands now represent the three significant figures that we saw in the E48, uh, plus a multiplier and a tolerance. So that is five colored bands. So that's why some resistors have four colored bands and some have five colored bands. And you may not run across this very often, but every once in a while you'll see uh, actually one more band on the end that represents the temperature coefficient of the resistor. Uh, so if you happen to see uh, one last band there and you don't know what that is, that's a temperature coefficient. So hopefully uh, you've learned a little bit more about where these oddball uh, values come from. They're not random. They are chosen very specifically. And uh, that's the procedure. So we'll see you in the next video.